back to the Wrestling Rundown, episode 97. This is the SmackDown Rundown, and as you can see, I am your host, Travis Cole. I am by myself. Uh, it's because I'm sick. Uh, I've been sneezing and coughing all day, uh, so I advised Kevin Hawk not to come by for the SmackDown Rundown, let him know that I'd be doing it myself, because uh, I don't want to get him sick. Uh, so hopefully a couple days off will make me feel better. Uh, we'll get him back next week. We'll get Thomas Wolf back, hopefully. But for now... You gotta deal with me. If there's weird cuts in the video, it's probably because I'm coughing or sneezing. And you guys don't have to deal with that. So, just a fair warning. Uh, before we get to SmackDown, breaking news happened while I was watching SmackDown that at a NXT live event in Lowell, Massachusetts, uh, Finn Balor lost the NXT championship to Samoa Joe. Uh, which is very strange. It doesn't happen very often. Uh, but it makes you wonder, like, what's gonna happen? Uh... How many more weeks of TV do we have uh, recorded from the show in uh, in Dallas? So we, we've had two weeks of access NXT TV so far. So how many more? Uh, we haven't seen Finn Balor on TV since retaining at NXT Dallas. So it's really interesting to see where this is going to go. But I was just saying yesterday during the midweek wrap-up that the next time uh, Samoa Joe got a chance at the title, whoever was champion was really screwed. And... Lo and behold, Samoa Joe is the new NXT champion. So we'll have to see how that goes. But let's move into SmackDown. I'm going to skip going through the matches. I'm just going to run you through from beginning to end. I might jump around a little bit, but not too severe. We open up with Miz TV, uh, the guest being AJ Styles. I believe this was announced on Raw. I don't really remember it. But uh, this is all Miz asking AJ whether or not he sent Gallows and Anderson to attack Roman Reigns on Raw. And AJ goes, no, you know, yeah, we're, we're friends. We, you know, we go way back, you know, we've, we've been through some stuff, but I never told them to go after Roman Reigns. And Miz spends this whole time just really poking and prodding at AJ, just trying to make him mad uh, and, and keep putting the blame on him. And then he gets into this weird actor uh, mode where him and Maurice are talking and Maurice... They start making out, and then when he turns back to AJ, AJ knocks him on his ass. Uh, and this actually went into a match uh, later in the show. I'll skip right to that, actually. Uh, a great match. I don't know. It's, of course, it's AJ Styles, but it's not very often I say, man, I really enjoyed that Miz match. Uh, and I think I've said this multiple times, because one of the first, like, kind of small feuds that AJ had when he debuted in WWE was against The Miz. And they have fantastic matches together. I don't know what it is. I really enjoyed this match. A lot of great back and forth. Uh, Miz doing a lot of really good heel tactics. Uh, using Maurice to his advantage. Uh, just everything that a heel should do, Miz does very well. And his, you know, his talk segment, his promos, he makes me not like him, which is his job. And he does a good job. Uh, and then, obviously, he tries to uh, take the heel's way out of a match. Um... Eventually, he gets fed up. He can't. Uh, he tried getting the figure four on, and AJ was able to turn it over. He escaped the calf crusher, and he was done. He tells Maurice to grab the Intercontinental title, and they're going to take off. Uh, but Maurice, uh, before she's able to get over to the Miz, he's already heading up the ramp, and he gets stopped as Gallows and Anderson uh, make their way down to ringside. Uh, this causes him to turn around. AJ does his little uh, uh, slingshot plancha, his forearm to the outside. Tosses Miz back in, hits the Styles Crash, the Phenomenal Forearm, whatever you want to call it. AJ picks up the win, uh, but now there's still more uh, fuel to the fire that AJ is using Gallows and Anderson. And now you got to think, the fact that Finn Balor is no longer the NXT champion, uh, does that mean that he is going to be debuting at Payback? Is he going to uh, screw AJ Styles or is the Bullet Club going to screw AJ Styles and then f sign with Finn? It's, uh, it's, it's very, there's a lot of things going on. And it's really interesting to see how this is all going to play out. Uh, but our first match of the night was Ryback versus Kalisto. I, d I still I don't care about this. I used to really like Ryback and then they used the Wyatt family as a way to launch him into something that makes absolutely no sense for him. I don't like it. This this bothers me to no end. 
he does end up beating Kalisto. Uh, the end was fun. They 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 both kind of like did so. They were spinning around each other and like uh, Kalisto tried to do the Selena del Sol gets caught and gets turned into the shell shock. Ryback picks up the win. So now they're technically one and one because Kalisto beat him in the pre-show WrestleMania. So does this mean that we're gonna get a third? Ugh, a third match between Ryback and Kalisto? Is this going to be a rematch for the U.S. title because he beat the champion? I hope not. Let's please make that not a thing. Please. Uh, speaking of not a thing, we were supposed to have Baron Corbin versus Dolph Ziggler, but on the way to the ring, Dolph Ziggler gets attacked by Baron Corbin, and Baron Corbin completely destroys him. He throws him into the barricade multiple times, just... Complete and utter destruction. He ends up hitting the end of days on the outside again. And uh, Rich uh, interviews him at the top of the stage saying, uh, you know, why, why did you why did you attack Dolph Ziggler? This was, this was supposed to be a match. And he says, because I can. And this, you know, we talked about this when Baron Corbin came up, uh, you know, obviously starting his his uh, his streak winning the, uh, the Under the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. But his first night on Raw when he... You know, him and Ziggler go to a double DQ, or, or double count, my bad, um, and then hits the end of days on the outside. He doesn't win, but he doesn't lose. He gets kind of that, he gets that heel victory because he left the babyface laying, and he's he's building a really good feud with Dolph Ziggler, and I hope this continues. This is something that Tyler Breeze really needed when he started, and unfortunately, he's got pushed by the wayside. Uh, but I'm really hoping that this means good things for Baron Corbin uh, moving forward because I'm a huge fan of Baron Corbin. Uh, we also had Rich do an interview. Uh, after that would be the AJ versus Miz match. But after that, we have uh, Rich interviewing Dean Ambrose and Sami Zayn. They'll be in the main event taking on Chris Jericho and Kevin Owens. Um, and Rich asking you know both of them how they feel about uh, facing their respective payback opponents. Uh, Ambrose... Uh, Ambrose is, uh, plans on making them feel like two pounds of leftover spotted dick, and I think that was uh, just a reason for Dean Ambrose to say dick on TV. It worked out because they were in London. It's pudding. They're, they, he wants them to feel like pudding. That's the thing. Uh, and then this gets really funny because apparently Sammy, you know, Sammy Zayn agrees. He goes, yeah, uh, you know, we we want to we want to you know get some momentum going into payback, blah blah blah. But he also says that Ambrose has been shutting down all of these tag team names that he's come up with. He, he had Sambrose, uh, he had a couple a couple other ones, and like Ambrose says he wants to be called the Rough Riders, and Sami Zayn's like, no, 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 we can't do that. That's That, that can be construed as sexual. We don't want to do that. And it was just really funny comedy between the two of them, and it works out so well that both of them are super funny guys, uh, great baby faces. Uh, so just a little bit of fun that they had before... Uh, heading into their tag team match. And speaking of tag team matches, we had the ladies in tag team action. We had Paige and Natalia taking on Team Bads and Naomi and Tamina. Fantastic tag team work on both sides of this match. Tamina and Naomi obviously have been teaming together for a long time. Uh, Paige and Natalia have uh, teamed off and on for, you know, God knows how long. Uh, but just some great double team maneuvers on both sides. Uh, they did the wishbone on Naomi, uh, which was great. And then, yeah, Tamina and Naomi, uh, great heels uh, against one another. But, uh, so we had Natalia trying to go uh, for the sharpshooter, I believe. Or no, no, Paige ended up hitting the rampage and Tamina broke it up. Uh, and then, yeah, in, in a roundabout way, the, uh, the, legal, the legal people at the time were... Uh, Naomi and Natalia, and uh, so Natalia goes for no. I'm sorry, I'm sick. I'm losing. It. It's Paige and Naomi. Paige is setting up for the Scorpion crosslock, and while she's doing that, uh, Natty is able to stop Tamina by uh, from breaking it up by getting her into the Sharpshooter, uh, and the babyface team wins with dual submissions. Uh, a good win for them. Obviously, Natty needing that win as she heads to payback, as she will face Charlotte, and she'll have Bret Hart in her corner uh, to oppose Ric Flair in Charlotte's. Then, then we had a very bizarre match. 
if you we haven't talked about it a lot because we didn't know where it was going. But if you've kept up with the uh, Golden Truth storyline, where at first it was Goldust trying to get R Truth to be his tag team partner, and then R Truth trying to get Goldust to be his tag team partner, and then the Golden Truth got put into the Booty Bowl, but then Goldust didn't want to team with R Truth, so he teamed with Fondango, so we have Goldango, and then they lost because it's Goldango. Uh, but we got a match where it was Fandango versus R-Truth with Goldust as a special guest referee. Okay, makes sense. Uh, Goldust comes out, he's got a gold referee shirt on. Makes sense. This is something that could happen in a feud like this. But then it gets really weird because then we have Fandango and R-Truth trying to, uh out dance, out swivel, out thrust each other in the match. Uh, and then Goldust gets involved by holding both of their hands and R Truth does the little like arm wiggle thing. And then Fandango puts Goldust's hand on his chest and they start dancing and wiggling and everything. And that allows R Truth to hit the lie detector on Fandango and R Truth picks up the win. <sighs> what? What the fuck? Did they just not have anybody else to put in this segment on SmackDown? Like, okay, it's a thing. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see where it goes from here. But f fuck if I know. Uh, we had promo build. Uh, speaking of the Booty Bowl, uh, the two finalists, the Vod Villains and Enzo and Cass, uh, had dueling had a dual promo. Uh, Enzo and Cass came out in the ring, get interrupted by the Vod Villains, uh, going back and forth. A great promo. Uh, it's, I, I appreciate, well, I always appreciate Enzo and Cass's promos, uh, because it's, it, you know, Enzo runs it, and then Big Cass has this thing, he says it, it's always fun. Uh, but the Vod Villains had a really good, uh, a really good promo on their side, uh, you know, using the fact that they're more intelligent, they're more, uh, classy, they're, they're men, uh, you know, making fun of Enzo's hair, and then Enzo saying that he doesn't understand the words that they used and all this stuff. Great. They didn't even have to fight each other. It was just great words back and forth. We still have another week. Uh, well, I get, uh, yeah. We have, we, got a, we got about a week and a half until payback, uh, so I'm sure we'll get a little bit more build uh, next week on Raw and SmackDown, and we'll see where that goes. But I'm excited to see these two go at it. Uh, and then I'm excited to see which one of them ends up facing the New Day for the tag team titles. It's going to be fun. And we get to our main event. Sami Zayn, Dean Ambrose taking on Kevin Owens and Chris Jericho. Kevin Owens and Chris Jericho, a fantastic heel tag team. Uh, they've, you know, the few times, the first time they teamed, absolutely hysterical. Just some, some great stuff. Uh, but they've really actually taken it to a level where they work well as a tag team. Um, you know, doing really well, uh, cutting the baby faces off from their corner, uh, you know, using, uh, distracting the referee and, uh, you know, blind tags. Uh, yeah, it was just some great stuff from both of them. Um, and then it, uh, it gets to a point where we have, let's see. So we have, yeah, we have Ambrose and we have, uh, we have Owens, uh, in the ring. Uh, Ambrose hits dirty deeds on Owens. Jericho uh, ends up breaking up the pin, and when he breaks up the pin, he ends up getting knocked back out of the ring, which I'm pretty sure Ambrose knocked him back out, because then Ambrose goes up and goes for an elbow drop on Owens, and while he's going for the elbow drop, Jericho gets up, shoves him off, and hangs him up on the top rope. Uh, Sami Zayn uh, then gets taken out by Jericho as well, while Kevin Owens is able to uh, use the... Uh, unfortunate landing that Dean Ambrose had to his advantage and they pick up the win. Kind of a weird ending. Uh, I mean, obviously, you'd be in a very... Um, you wouldn't exactly be in f uh, fighting condition if you got hung up on the top rope the way he did because it does... it is very painful. Uh, but it was, yeah, it was, it, it was kind of weird. Uh, good that it's uh, a variety. It's not the same uh, type of fall that we see all the time. So... Uh, it, it was it was good for what it was. Uh, good SmackDown main event. A, a pretty good SmackDown overall. Uh, you know, despite me, I'm sick as hell. Uh, wasn't able to focus 
too clearly on it, but I think I uh, reviewed it well enough for you. Thanks for watching. Uh, sorry, uh, luckily there was, I didn't sneeze or cough at all. This is awesome. Um, but I probably will as soon as the camera turns off. Uh, thanks for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, comment your favorite parts of SmackDown. Comment what you think about uh, both Enzo and Cass and the Vaude Villains getting to the finals and being next in line uh, for a tag team title shot. Uh, also, what do you think about the, uh, the AJ Styles Bullet Club storyline? What do you think about Samoa Joe being the NXT champion? Post down in the comments. Let us know what you think. Be sure to click the links down in the description because they will send you to all of our different social medias. You get to Facebook where we post all kinds of stuff. Plus, we get video updates. Uh, if you go to Instagram, you can check out our weekly pictures. Uh, yesterday's uh, Throwback Thursday was talking about the And his name is John Cena meme that's completely taken over the internet. Um, you can get to emails. You can uh, email Kevin Hawk personally or you can email all of us at fanstalkwrestling at gmail.com. Uh, many more down there. Twitter, uh, Tumblr, all that stuff down there in the description. Uh, and all of those will let you know when we post videos that are going to be up in that playlist. Uh, because we got four of them this week. We got our usuals. We got our raw review. We got yesterday's midweek wrap up. We got this SmackDown rundown. Coming up next will be Indie News with me and Kevin Hawk. Uh, talking Ring of Honor. Uh, we got a couple other uh, result shows uh, that will be coming up. So look forward to that. Also, look forward to more content coming on a different channel. As we've been talking for about another about the last couple weeks or so, we are opening a second channel. Has yet to be named, but we are planning on doing uh, more discussion, more um, talking as opposed to review videos. We're gonna we've each got our own little fun videos. We're all coming together for uh, fantasy warfare with brand new format. Uh, we're having a lot of fun putting this stuff together, so we want to know if there's any type of video that you specifically want us want to see us do. Uh, post down in the comments or get a hold of us on any of the social medias. Let us know what you want to see. We can take some of those considerations, uh, some of those suggestions into consideration, and we'll see what we can do. And uh, you can let us know. So look forward to around the time episode 100 drops of the Wrestling Rundown, that's when the second channel should be opening, along with a website where you'll be able to find all of our stuff in one specific place. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you at whatever video you decide to watch next. I don't care how good this match is, fuck the news.